Welcome to our Tips for Getting Started tutorial. In this lesson, I'll be covering some of the basics you need to have down before you get rolling in Cubase. It's important that you take the time to prepare your computer for Cubase before you jump into audio recording. This will improve your system's performance and maximize your productivity and quality, and most importantly, minimize frustration. First of all, make sure that your software is properly installed, you have a stable operating system, and the latest drivers for all your peripherals are installed, video, network drivers, etc. If you find your computer's crashing for no apparent reason, make sure you've got the latest drivers installed for your peripherals. You can download and save them all somewhere where they're easily accessible for reinstall if needed. If you're working on a laptop with only one hard drive, make sure you've got enough free space and remove the files you don't really need. You might also have to reinstall your operating system. Starting with a clean slate often gets rid of many problems that you might have been having before the Cubase install. Back up your drivers and data regularly and a reinstall won't be such a hassle. Disable background apps that make intensive use of memory and hard drive resources. Don't run any other non-essential apps while you're using Cubase. On a Windows platform, pressing Ctrl-Alt-Delete brings up the Windows Task Manager where you can see which processes are running in the background. You can end processes here without harming your system. You can also see how much CPU and RAM you've got available. However, after you reboot, all those background applications just start running again, so you'll need to make some permanent changes to the settings for those applications. By the way, it's a good idea to use a separate computer for internet use because antivirus software itself is fairly resource intensive. Let's talk about how to modify which applications launch at startup in Windows. Click on Start, and in the box type MS Config. In Vista, we're prompted to continue. I've just clicked on the Continue button, and now the System Configuration window opens. Let's go to the Startup tab and disable anything that's not critical. For example, Adobe Reader and Acrobat Manager, Messenger Services, Skype, etc. And let's cancel out of that window. On your Macintosh, you can view the active processes by accessing the Activity Monitor from the Finder menu or by selecting Go, Applications, Utilities, and then double-clicking the icon for the Activity Monitor. But generally, the quickest way to deactivate unnecessary apps is to choose any program loaded on your dock and then do a File, Quit. You are able to run other music applications at the same time as Cubase if you need to, but remember, if you want to run more than one audio application simultaneously, you need a multi-client driver, which shares access to the audio hardware between applications. You will also need a more generous amount of computer resources than I covered in my previous lesson. Thirdly, you'll need to watch out for compatibility issues between the active software and hardware. This concludes our lesson on getting started.